I think it has a potential of going much higher, uh, but that is going to involve specifically uh, the stock getting back up above an area right near 265. And so if that happens, I suspect that we will uh, make a run for the all-time highs. Earlier this year in February, at the height of the major downturn for Tesla stock, I had the chance to interview Mark Newton, the head of technical research for Fundstrap. At the time, he predicted Tesla stock would drop an additional 13 to 20 percent to April before bottoming at $143. So what actually happened? Tesla stock actually bottomed at $142 on April 22nd, less than one dollar away and right in line with his time frame. So what about the future? At the time, he said that if the stock gets past $265, it has a chance to go all the way past all-time highs to $565. Let's see what he says now. Fundstrat Global Advisors is a financial research firm co-founded by Tom Lee, who himself is a notable Wall Street strategist. Mark was one of the only strategists to correctly call the S&P 500 year-end targets for both 2022 and 2023. He's a frequent contributor to CNBC, Fox Business, and Bloomberg. Welcome, Mark. Thank you again for joining me one more time. Thank you, Herbert. It's nice to be back. So, you know, full disclosure, I was not an M. I don't know yet if I'm a fan of technical analysis, but boy, you hit it out of the park. Um, you and I did an interview in February of this year about Tesla stock, and uh, it, was, it was a great interview. It was a great show. A lot of people watched it. If you and the audience haven't seen it yet, you might want to check it out because he goes in detail of what he does, how he does it, and his conviction. But what shocked me, and I think many of my viewers, they were demanding that I bring you back, <laughs> is because you nailed it. You basically said that the stock at the time when February, it was already starting to fall. You said that the, you think that the bottom in two to three weeks or four weeks might be 142, one, yeah, 142, and that's exactly what ended up happening. Uh, a, a quick uh, comment on that. I'm certainly happy that my prognostication worked out for you and your viewers, for those that have an interest in, in actual stock direction. I know that, you know, you have a lot of quality content and great contributors that talk about the fundamentals, but a lot of people also care to know, you know, when those fundamentals will actually help the stock to go up or when it would go down. And so that's why I try to educate people as to how to use technical analysis and really just understanding the trends and, and how stocks move. And it's simply that, you know, bullish fundamentals don't always lead stocks right up right away. And things sometimes can be in lengthy consolidations. And so, uh, you know, happy to, to be back here and, and shed some further light as to what I'm seeing today. Okay. Thank you, Mark. So, of course, this is not financial advice. Um, no one can predict the future. And what I'm learning over time is I'm a pure long-term uh, investor. I pick a company that's innovative, that's going to grow, and I think it's going to conquer a market multiple markets in this case, and I feel comfortable with that, and I can't predict the future. However, I'm learning that there's certain technicals that can help as part of your decision making. And so that's the that's the thing that I'm trying to understand from you and learning from you. So let's get started with your prediction. I've got a very sh a, a short clip of what you said in February. Uh, it'll be fun to just go and revisit that clip right now. You know, extraordinarily well, and the stock peaked as of the end of December, right near 265. So currently trends are negative in the short term. Um, I use a, a number of different methods, but I use some counter trend techniques. And my own thinking is that within the next three to four weeks, if we see Tesla down near 164, that's my initial target, which is about 13% lower or so than where it is today, uh, that could create its first true bottom. Uh, and there's a potential for it, in my view, to go to 143. Uh, and if that happens anytime between March to April, that should create what I think should be the low for the year, potentially, for Tesla. Uh, I think it has a potential of going much higher, uh, but that is going to involve specifically uh, the stock getting back up above an area right near 265. And so if that happens, I suspect that we will uh, make a run for the all-time highs. He uh, actually is bullish for the majority of this year into next year before peaking out. And so... Um, you know, that, that for, for Tesla, you know, we can share how investors can tune into my research, uh, when we're done with this presentation, but I, you know, once you're 
Uh, if you are a subscriber or a client of ours, then, then that's something we'll cover in terms of where the stock could peak out. But for right now, I'm just happy to say that, um, you know, there, there are brighter times to come for the stock. And I think that likely is going to start this spring and carry higher uh, almost throughout the year. <laughs> look how young we looked. <laughs> uh, so this was just February. You actually predicted that it was going to continue to fall and you called the bottom right to in mid-April, $142, which was just a dollar away. Well, that clip was what we're going to talk about shortly, which is what's your future prediction for Tesla. Um, so t just a little bit just to get everybody on the same page. How did you know at the time that it was going to continue falling to 142 well, a lot of my analysis just revolves around um, following trends, following momentum, taking a look at sentiment and cycles and seasonality, um, along with utilizing DeMarc indicators for evidence of exhaustion in either direction. At the time in February, the stock literally had just started to break down pretty severely and had gotten down under the prior lows from last October. So. For those that recall, the stock did get down to 194 back in late October. Uh, the time that you and I first spoke, Herbert, uh, it actually had broken that level and volume was actually heavier. So just, just to put things into perspective, that, uh, that normally can warn of additional short-term consolidation and, and deterioration in the stock price, and that's exactly what happened. Um, my success at, at giving targets was largely based on um, a, a few different projection methods that I use looking at swings and looking at, you know, Fibonacci levels. And, and for timing, I use different cycles, not only looking at low to high swings and projecting forward, but also just looking at what uh, the cycle finder suggests. And, and that is based on, and we can talk about that a little bit more in detail, yeah. but that is from the foundation of study of cycles. So the majority of my analysis, when I spoke to you said that a low could happen right around March or April of this year, and then it should be the low of the year. And that, uh, you know, I, I happen to be very lucky on, on you <laughs> yep. know, getting the, the low within a dollar, but generally it's not that, that, uh, that right. pressure. But, you know, it, it was certainly uh, very happy to have seen that work out like we discussed. And, and now the stock, you know, certainly technically it's in much better shape now than it was, uh, you know, at the time in February. So I think in general, this is very good news for investors. You always like to see breaks of trends and that for that to happen on on good volume and specifically in anticipation of, uh, you know, some good news to come. And, and many times that's what can drive the stock versus the fundamentals themselves. It's really what what is the unknown and, and the, un, un, you know, the anticipation of, of really what's to come. And, and so I think we, we certainly have that in front of us. Uh, in the months ahead. Okay. So let's just uh, summarize here. This is 2024 here. This is based on quarters since uh, 2022. This is Tesla stock. This is what happened to Tesla stock. And when we talked, it was February of 2024. So it was right here. So the stock had already started its downward fall. It was the gloomy. It was terrible. Everybody was saying, you know, uh, the world was crashing for Tesla. There was no good news. It was all China is bad and auto is bad and everything's bad. Um, and then, but at that time, you said two things. One was you think it's going to continue to fall and it's going to go down to one. You said either, you know, you said, you know, obviously you're not, you don't know, but you were saying, I think it's going to be around 165 or 142. Uh, and it's going to be somewhere in, you know, April, May, June, May air timeframe. And then you said, but once it gets past that bottom, you already at that time were predicting that for the second half of the year, you said that uh, things will turn around, um, not just for Tesla, but even the broader market. And so that, I thought that was pretty bold of you at the to say that, and, you know, of course, you're going to forecast. It's hard to forecast. You're almost always wrong. But it was your call that the, it was going to get worse. And but then you thought it was going to get better by the second half. So that's what's good. Um yeah. So the, and then and then this part here. Okay. So this is where you said if Tesla stock specifically gets back up and it hits past two sixty five, and then this is why you called it right because you at that time even you had the same graph but it was just up to February here. You already said yeah. okay. It looks like if it gets past this number, and if it does, 
than you said, it can go all the way to all time high, maybe even $565. But let's get there later. Um, and we're going to show people how you do cycles. Can you explain a little bit of um, just, um, yeah, what's what's the next thing you want to share Then the next slide here? Well, this is simply just a weekly chart of, of Tesla going back since 2021. And so, you know, we see the extent of the stock's consolidation and the downtrend that really has been present in the stock uh, since November of 2021. So, you know, the last yeah. two and a half years, um, you know, what's what's interesting and what's a new development is that the stock has now exceeded that downtrend. Um, we did find, you know, temporary, as we call resistance right at those prior peaks from December of 2023. So that was right at 265. That was, um, you know, one reason why I thought that level could be important. But the stock, honestly, you know, briefly got above that. We did see volume really start to surge. You see that on the, the lower part below the stock, that little green area of volume, which really, really showed that that big push and volume up. So, you know, it's almost always a very good sign if you can break lengthy trends and, and do so on very heavy volume. And that's exactly what has happened in the last month. Okay. Uh, what's what's this slide? Well, those are simply just some some technical comments that, that talk about uh, my thinking of where the stock can go. Um, you know, looking at breakouts and and momentum and and you know targets and this and that. And so, you know, the the, the, the you know, we can talk about the bigger picture, but that's just largely you know basically what this says is is that right now the technical picture for Tesla is a lot more positive than it was back in, in February. And, and some of that has to do with a change in momentum, change in technical structure, and the fact that, that cycles um, you know, are still largely positive until this fall and then are really positive after the election into next year. We can speak about that a little more. But uh, you, know, it, it's, it's, you really just have to have an understanding of, of trying to follow the trend. And at this point, trends have given us, you know, reason for optimism uh, versus in, in February when they were a lot more negative. I do want to spend a lot of time about your prediction for the future. We'll get there. But I wanted to uh, just a little dive a little bit closer to how do you know, how do you predict the cycles? So you, you can take a look at the chart of the stock, which you did, and then you can kind of see, okay, these, these are like a, the resistance lines. I don't remember what you called it, that these are lines yep. where it just doesn't seem to pop, or these are like kind of the bottoms. Right. And that's how you came up with 265. But how do you know about, you know, the cycles, right? Because Tesla is very much a um, kind of a, it goes up, it goes on very, very volatile. Explain um, this, this, uh, this chart here. So the foundation of study of cycles, I'll, I'll give them a, a nod. They, they are uh, a great organization. And one of the tools they make available to their members is something called their cycle finder tool. Uh, it allows you to put in any stock or index. And, you know, we can basically look back uh, either on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or a monthly. And it takes all those highs and lows in the past. And it basically mm -hmm. says these are the strongest cycles for a given stock or a certain index. These are the ones with the highest Bartel score. So a lot of it has to do with just statistics and determining, you know, which of these highs and lows is is the strongest. And then basically it will attempt to, you know, make a future forecast and, and show the phasing of when a cycle peaks or troughs. And so I find it incredibly useful. And that's obviously just a just a small part of what I look at for analysis. But I think, you know, combining the current trend with the current cycles makes a lot of sense. And then I can overlay different methods to really add to the probability of success. So in this case, you know, it showed bottoming in April going up and it certainly did. And currently, if we want to talk about what the cycle shows, it does show that, you know, we do see a minor peak in the short run, which happened last week. And now the, the stock has begun to consolidate again. And so uh, the key takeaway here is that you know, I do expect this to prove brief and likely should be over in the next couple of weeks. And then I think we're actually going to turn higher again and actually test, if not get back up above 265. And that could put last July's peaks into, uh, you know, on the radar, which is uh, really right up near $300. And that's really the first, 
you know, th- that's the next big target that I'm looking at for for Tesla that I do think is a potential uh, between now and the fall. But as you can see on that on the cycle chart, that it does show a downward bias between really uh, the fall into the election before it starts to turn higher. And my stock market cycle shows the same thing. So I don't think it's going to be, you know, a, a straight shot higher, regardless of what has happened in the last month. I do view that as being very positive to the stock, but uh, things take time. So we could have some consolidation, but generally the key takeaway is that, you know, we've gone from a period of, of lower lows or lower highs and, and, and lower lows to now a period where, you know, the trends are starting to change and get more positive. And I think that's bullish for the future, specifically very positive into next year. So, uh, you know, I do, I do suspect that over 300 that Tesla can make a run back to new all time highs. Uh, that's not something we need to speak about right away, but we can certainly address it in, in future, uh, recordings, but, but that is very much what, uh, what I expect. So that would, that would call okay. for a, you know, a move back up over 414 that was made back in November of, uh, 2021. All right. So you explained that this, uh, pink line is the cycles and it's very, you said it's a very complicated algorithm that you used. It looks at the past behavior of a stock and then it kind of overlay it. So it looked like it actually predicted it correctly. This is what happened. Now, the part that I, I, you know, have to consider is that, you know, this does not know that in November there will be an election. This right. does not know that um, somewhere in this, this half year, there will be a Robotax event, which is actually possibly <laughs> not just a regular event. It could actually be a, a you know, completely company changing event. Maybe, maybe right. not, but right. yep. n- nobody knows. It doesn't know these things. That's but, right. Yeah. How do you explain that? Or Well, I, I that? it's it's less about me making that very clear. I think that it's more about studying, you know, the shape of the cycle. It's less about the magnitude of, of how far up or down those swings go. It's more about the amplitude and, and when when those cycles start to turn, um, similar as they did in, in April of this year or in January of last year, uh, you know, typically that coincides with very strong uh, price action to the upside. And so I think that, you know, it's it's been a great couple months. I, uh, I still think that we're going to push higher. But, you know, as we get into more of a more difficult seasonal time for the broader market, um, you know, Tesla certainly could be vulnerable to, you know, some mild consolidation between September and November before we start to push higher again. Okay, but so I, I'm showing another slide here. You do say that there should be a, a weakness ahead of the election. Yeah. Did that just like coincidence that this pink line showed that regardless just because of the previous cycle? And then you're That's going- absolutely right. It is a coincidence. I mean, it doesn't yeah. take anything into effect except for prior highs and lows. And so, yeah. you know, it, it just sort of lines up that way. So, yeah, that, that gives me more confidence if you find a, a big inflection point that's going to happen near a major mm-hmm. announcement or the U.S. election, for example. And, and that that really means you, we all ought to pay very close attention uh, you know, on any sort of weakness into, I would say, even late October into early November. Oh, can you explain that a little bit? Because um, in this particular election, um, there was a lot of um, experts that were saying that if it was a Trump presidency, as soon as the assassination attempt occurred, the next few days, the markets went up because they're saying, hey, a Trump presidency is good for the economy. And that jumped up. And then even Tesla stock jumped up and everybody was saying that that's part of it, that, you know, Trump is better for uh, Tesla. I've done a lot of shows where we discussed all the ways that he's better, where he's his worse and all that. But mm-hmm. my point is that why are you saying that it's actually going to be a weakness before an election, especially when I understood that during election years, stock market goes up, everything is much better. Stock markets do go up during election years. It tends to be a year of a lot of uncertainty. Uh, some of that wall of worry, so to speak, is what can cause stocks to rise. Uh, we certainly have that here. People really aren't that enthusiastic, even though we've had you know, a very good first half of the year already. And so, but you know, if you study election years, 
like I have going back since 1950, normally the key period of an election year where you do tend to get consolidation and weakness is, is a time from August, September, uh, really into November. And so it just happens to line up like that. And then really after the election, a lot of that has to do with just uncertainty being resolved. And, you know, hopefully it will be, a, you know, a very clean election and, and have no, uh, you know, inconsistencies and it will be uh, respected by by everybody. And I think that that, uh, you know, should be very important in, in helping, uh, you know, the stock market to, to push higher. So in, in most election years, we look back and, and you see a similar pattern. And that after the election, you know, we do tend to see very, very strong uh, performance from the market. Okay. And I know that Tom Lee is part of Fundstrat. He's well-respected strategist uh, about the economy and S&P and all that. What's, uh, what are your projections about what's going to happen to the economy, uh, interest rates, cuts, all that? I actually think that rates are going to continue to fall. Uh, the economy has been showing slow but sure evidence of weakening on the fringes. Um, the economy, in my view, is still, um, you know, in pretty decent shape, but you are starting to see some evidence of the labor market weakening, a little bit of rise in unemployment. Uh, we're still at a 4% unemployment rate, so that's really not a big deal. But I, I think the housing market has shown some evidence of weakening. Uh, all of this points to rates in the dollar likely falling further as we get a little bit more clarity as to when the Fed's rate cuts are going to be, which I think will start in September. So, you know, historically, you look at the correlation between treasuries and equities, and it's been pretty positive. So as rates have pulled back, that's actually been very, very good for the, the, the stock market. Um, that has less to do with the stock market always rallies as the economy is weak. If anything, you know, normally the opposite can be true. But in this case, it's more about you know, getting the market comfortable with when the Fed can finally start to cut interest rates. And I think that as that becomes more and more clear, um, you know, and that should point to uh, the Fed starting to cut this year. Always difficult to, to when you hear the Fed say we're, we're, you know, data dependent and this and that. I mean, because usually these interest rate hikes, like we saw in recent years, you know, they, they take sometimes 12 to 18 months before they even start to, to work their magic. And so we've seen, you know, what, over 525 basis points of rate hikes. And largely the U.S. consumer has been pretty well insulated from that because most people who own homes have locked in at 3% mm -hmm. and have not necessarily been affected by these, these rate hikes. But uh, I, I do sense my, my longer term cycles do suggest that the economy will start to wane uh, starting next year, not this year, but really next year should start to turn down. And we actually do go into a recession by 2026. So and that lines up with a pretty predictable 18 year cycle of real estate prices, which last bottomed in 2009 and should bottom in 2027. So I sense that. Uh, you know, the markets this year is in great shape and it was last year. And, and you know, we at Fundstrat have talked about reasons why the stock market should rise and people have been very skeptical. And, you know, next year, though, I, I, I will we'll leave it to our future conversation. But I do sense that, uh, you know, we might be entering a, a period not only of geopolitical conflict that could get more intense over the years to come, but also where the market might go into, a, you know, sort of double dip and do something similar that we saw from 2021 to 2022. And, and that could provide ultimately opportunity. Um, you know, the whole concept of, of EVs is, is, you know, very promising. And, and we, we have heard all these various CEOs talk about that, that it's certainly gaining traction. I, I don't know that, you know, we have anything to fear from Trump, particularly if Elon Musk can deliver on uh, giving 45 million a month. That was likely just a wild rumor and maybe not yeah, truth. Right. We don't know yet, but, um, yeah. You know, I, I think that he'll we, we do know that he's very much in Trump's camp and is on his side. So uh, the more that he shows contributions to the Trump campaign, uh, he can he can pretty much guarantee, I think, that Trump will be on his side if Trump is the president. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't necessarily like to use left versus right to make any sort of predictions. I, I think in general, over time, it's proven that it doesn't really matter what side you're on the market works more based on the economy and what the Federal Reserve does in terms of fiscal policy and monetary policy. And, you know, they've shown that actually a balanced house is much better for the market than one that is uh, just all on one side, Democratic or Republican. So, 
you know, I, I guess I would be hopeful that we see a, a balanced uh, house, uh, a balanced uh, government, and that might be more beneficial so that we don't get caught to extremes. But I don't sense that the next decade is just going to be, you know, up, up and away. I, I do sense yep. that we're going to probably go into a time of, of difficulty, uh, particularly in 2026. And so with regards to Tesla, you know, I think the, the stock is, is going to be very promising. Uh, I do sense it gets back to highs and, and we can talk about that in a minute. But I, I think that my, my thinking of the greatest period of gains for the stock should happen between November and next spring to summer. I think that should be a very, very good time. So uh, I do own Tesla here and I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with it. And I think that uh, whether or not I choose to hedge my shares between September and November is unclear, but I'm very much on board now in a way that I was not back in February and, and expected we'd probably see a little bit more to the downside. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk Tesla. And again, just to clarify, uh, I did have you answer a lot about the economy and thank you for that because it's very useful. Yeah. But in your analysis for stocks, in this case, we're talking Tesla, you don't um, you don't take that into consideration. This is all technicals. It's all about looking at cycles and what you're predicting based on past um, kind of actions, right? So that is 100% correct. Yeah. Okay. I just want to be clear that people, I'm glad you said that because uh, this is things I obviously, you know, we as investors are, you, you know, include some of the fundamental, of course, fundamentals are important, but it's the, uh, it's, it's the technicals we're looking at today. So let's just look at the near term for Tesla stock and then your predictions for the next term. So you've got this table here. So you said, okay, this is July. This is exactly where we are today. And the stock rose all the way up to 260. Uh, it stalled at 265, but pullbacks could afford good buying opportunities near 222 to 225 for push up to test 2023 20, peaks near 300. So you're, you saw it here 265 and then it fell to 241. Is that, you're just looking at facts. This is what happened, correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So based but on this jump of, and fall. It, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the volume expanded as it broke out. That's generally a very bullish sign, technically very positive when big trends are broken on really, really good volume. So Normally, when things get overbought, you know, they do require consolidation. You've seen that recently in some large cap technology stocks, uh, not dissimilar. But ultimately, you know, as we pull back, it will create opportunity. So, you know, if you want to look very, very micro short term, uh, mm -hmm. the stock now is at 240. Uh, you know, it is going to approach, I think, the, the lows from about a week ago, which were made near 233, that's really a very important spot technically. If it breaks that, then it could get down to that range that I, I noted, 222 to 225. Uh, under that would be about 208, and that I can't rule that out. But I sense that would be an excellent entry point, specifically if it happens in the next few weeks for a, uh, a pushback up towards 300. Okay. So let me, can you, sorry. <laughs> Please repeat that. If we're 240 now, if the next couple of weeks it falls down to 230, what was the number? Yeah, 233 was last week's lows. It actually happened yeah. last Friday. So we hit okay. 233.09. And that's going to be a level where technically oriented traders will step in to buy the stock or, or you know, it generally... You know, anytime you see an important form or low or high, uh, yeah. sometimes you get what's called support or resistance. Yeah. In this case, support is dropping where the stock very well might bottom at 233. But if it gets under there, then normally it it's wise It'll to, go to 222 and maybe yeah, even down to 208. Right. Okay, that's, that's what right. you're saying. Right. All right, yep. so then let's go and talk about what happens afterwards. What's your? Do you have um, a slide to show us or anything about what you think is going to happen in the next six months or year? Well, I can I can just show you. Uh, okay, so here we go. So here's the current consolidation in the stock. Uh, to review briefly, this is a daily chart, and so we see this 233 area. If it gets under that, then it probably gets down, and and you know you could get into 222 or, or you know a 50 percent retracement would be right near 220. Uh, ultimately. A bottoming in early August would line up with what the daily cycles show. And then I think the stock uh, would start to push higher and actually get back to um, this level here, which was last July's highs. 
And so that would involve, um, you know, the stock just moving a little bit, a little bit higher than where it is today, or, or a lot higher, I guess, in this respect. So anywhere from 220, potentially about $80 higher would take it up to challenge last year's highs. Uh, that would be an excellent move. And if that happens into September, I sense that that could be sort of important. And then we'd probably see further consolidation, meaning the stock would back off again into the election. And really any, let's say the stock reaches a maximum of 300 and then starts to roll over and moves to multi-week lows, then, then you can really get, you know, you can take this low to high range from April into say August, September and calculate, you know, ratios of that as to where you'd want to buy the stock. <clears throat> a bigger picture, you know, 300 is a very important level. Above that, of course, is 414 that was hit, uh, you know, back in November of 2021. Those are those are the two key areas that most technicians would would say are are quite important. And so, uh, you know, it, it's there's only so much that we can do to sort of analyze the stock, but we're just looking at momentum, which on the bottom part of this uh, screen, I'll, I'll just pull up what's known as uh, MACD, which is Moving Average Convergence Divergence, and basically they're two moving averages and you have a lagged signal line. And so when they cross above them, it's generally a time to be bullish. And when it crosses below them, uh, and in this case, we noticed that back in February, it had really started to cross below and was very, very negative. And so the trends were very negative and now they've clearly turned quite positive. So I use this along with a combination of sort of overbought, oversold levels, which are shown by RSI, Relative Strength Index, uh, to really put together complete picture. But my, my, you know, chief way as to how I look at stocks just has to do with, with trend following. And, and in this case, the stock has gone from a, a very, you know, visible downtrend uh, from 2021 to 2024 in this April, and now that's shifting into more of an uptrend. So that does make me, uh, you know, incredibly positive about you know, wanting to be part of this and, and uh, really being owning the stock and wanting to buy any sort of weakness and thinking that, uh, you know, it's a much different picture than February. I think it'll be much brighter. Okay. Um, so let's just well, get I'm back to your previous comments. Just... So thank you for doing that. That was great. Oops. Wrong, wrong, wrong one. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to present again, just the 265 number. I want to get to understand that because yep. in last in February, when we spoke, you said this, right? Um, 265 is important. If it hits 265 and it breaks through, then we're, that means we're going to get up uh, back to maybe all-time highs. But what actually happened was it it, it actually uh, hit 265, but then it fell, and now we're at mm -hmm. 240s, right? The, and right. so, yeah. it, but it did break through. So why, what, what's, uh, what, what uh, I guess, how do you explain that? Like, does that mean we did not actually break through? Uh, it, it held as of now, but, but I would, the, the reason 265 had more to do with the prior peak from last December than it did this uptrend, the downtrend line, the downtrend was, was very much broken. And so that, uh, you know, potentially at the time, a few months ago, maybe that had was closer to where this downtrend line was, was, was intersecting, but. Uh, given the strength and the time that's elapsed, uh, yeah, it was a clear breakout, and that means more than just a, you know, a number per se. It really has to do with just how the structure has gone from from bad, and now it's it's gotten better. Okay, so we're two forty, and um, you said it could keep falling a little bit more to two twenty fives, two twenties, and then it could then yeah. go back up to three hundreds. That's right, and then and then maybe a weakness in November. Okay. And then when do you think we'll get to all-time highs? Well, I think that probably happens by next spring or summer. I, I think that uh, it's it's tough to make the case that that happens right away this year. But, uh, you know, if there was a, a, a really good announcement that, that came about sometime in November, December, you know, that certainly would serve as a catalyst for, uh, you know, a big mm -hmm. surge and, and volume <laughs> There's a and big momentum. announcement that might come out of it. <laughs> right. So I, you know, like I, I'll leave that to you. I, I just look at, you know, the charts and the cycles and, and, you know, look, it does show a, uh, a choppier picture in the fall, but it, yes. it also, 
you know, the, the bigger takeaway and message is that, uh, you know, trends have changed. They've gone from, from negative to positive. And, and so it is going to be right to, to own this uh, for the future, you know, regardless of my thoughts on the economy or the market in the years to come. I, I think this will be uh, certainly, uh, I can't make any sort of Kathy Wood projections, but I, I will say that I, yeah. you know, I'm optimistic and I own it and I hope for the best. Okay. Well, that was fun. Thank you, Mark. I mean, I had to do the show. Lots of people asked me to get you back on because they yeah. were listening on the last time we did a show and kind of weirdly, I guess not weirdly to you, but to <laughs> you hit it Happy dead on. Kind of help and we'll see if things, uh, you know, I, I, for I, the next six months. I, yeah. I think February was an easier call mm. than, than now because I was very, very certain that it was going down 10 to 20%. I, I can't yeah. say the same here about the short term because it's it's already had a big move to the upside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and now it could be a little choppier but i still sense it's going to be it's going to be positive you know and it's going to be right to own it over the next nine to 12 months perfect okay so that's mark newton um let me just uh get the things i can imagine here so you you guys are you can find him on x at mark newton cmt i'll put all this in the description your website is fundstrat.com, F-U-N-D-S-T-R-A-T, fundstrat.com. And you guys are offering a 30-day 30 30 free trial to FS Insight, and we'll put the link in the description. You click that, and you get your 30-day insight to um, FS Insight. Yeah, technical insights from Mark. Thank you so much. Appreciate this. Thank time. you, Herbert. Yeah, I appreciate okay. that. It was wonderful to be here. So thank you. Well, well, this will be a recording that we're probably going to clip again. So <laughs> just be prepared. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Thank you. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.